Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Maritime transport represents the backbone of global trade, with more than 90% of goods carried by sea. Since ships carry large volumes of cargo, they are considered the most efficient and reliable solution for transporting various goods over long distances. Built in 1943, Trace Hombres is probably the world's oldest engineless cargo ship. The sailboat featured a length of 104 feet and a deck length of 91 feet. The brigantine was transporting a small quantity of goods on its deck. At that time, goods were packed, loaded and unloaded manually at both ports of departure and arrival. This process was time-consuming and required hundreds of port workers. As a result, shipping goods was an expensive endeavor. On this first-generation container ship, vessels could only carry containers on their decks, which also had to be geared with handling equipment because ports at the time lacked the necessary instruments to offload containers. As global demand for exported goods grew, the number of container shipping lines multiplied, and so did the containers. Larger vessels were built, bringing the carrying capacity to 4,614 TEUs from 1984. The boom in international trade in the mid-90s resulted in a substantial increase in the number of containers needing to be moved from China. This would encourage Maersk to rebuild Regina Maersk, a post-Panamax vessel with a carrying capacity of 6,418 TEUs. In 2006, Maersk decided to further enhance its carrying capacity by introducing its Emma Maersk, the first vessel of its triple E class with a capacity of 14,770 TEUs. These vessels focus not only on economies of scale, but also on the environment and energy efficiency. By 2013, other shipping companies had joined the race for larger container ships, and a new record was set almost every two years. The Panama Canal expansion project enhanced the world's container fleet and set new standards for the shipping industry. Container shipping lines were procuring larger carriers, scaling up in capacity from 18,000 to 24,000. In June 2022, Evergreen broke records for the world's largest container ship, with Ever a lot becoming the first ship to surpass 24,000 TEUs.
The ultra-large container vessel is 1,312 feet long and 201.7 feet wide with a draft of 17 meters. The vessel's deck is as massive as four soccer fields together. Although many vessels have the same dimensions, Everlot is the only vessel with an incredible carrying capacity of 24,004 TEUs. The Megamax vessel is fitted with hydrodynamic optimization technology, which means she can still speed while transporting heavy weights. This technology reduces fuel consumption by up to 13.5% per container compared to other traditional vessels. While the container ships grew bigger and bigger, the risk of navigating tight spots increased like never before. A good example is the 2021 Suez Canal obstruction. When Evergreen Ever Given, a 1,312 foot long and 192 foot wide container ship ran aground the Suez Canal, blocking the Silk Road for six days. The grounding was caused by strong winds that threw the vessel off course. It's believed that human and technical errors may have also caused the ship to be stuck in the canal banks. One of the world's busiest routes, the Suez Canal, allows the passage of 12% of global trade. The dam up of such a vital passage caused the delay of at least 369 ships and about $9.6 billion worth of trade. It was a nightmare for the shipping industry. As the salvage operation took much longer than expected, some ship owners rerouted their ships around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. This detour adds about 3,500 miles and a journey of up to 12 days. The 20,000 TEU's ship was refloated on March 29th. The salvage operation involved lightening the shipload by removing fuel and thousands of gallons of ballast water from Ever Given. In addition to dredging efforts to deepen the canal to 59 feet in order to float the ship, More than 6.5 million gallons of sand were removed. Tugboats were also used to pull and push the vessel in the specified direction. A total of 11 harbor tugs and two seagoing tugs were deployed. Careful planning and calculation were required to avoid damaging the container ship and worsening the situation. Today, the Suez Canal Authority is working on expanding the waterway dimensions to ensure this incident won't occur in the future. It takes years to construct these mighty ships bright minds, complex engineering processes, and the latest technology available. Building a container ship starts with meticulous planning and design, which might take up to 16 months.
Once the design is approved and all the materials are procured, the construction of the hull begins. Expert structural fabricators, welders, and solderers start shaping the hole in pieces. They hammer, cut, size, and twist the steel to the desired shape. When the plates are ready, they are welded to form subassemblies, which are assembled and returned to assemblies and, ultimately, to blocks. The blocks are then carried out to the docks, where they are equipped with big interior parts. After finishing the structure, the hull is polished and painted using anti-fouling paints to reduce corrosion. Here comes the launching step. The shipyard personnel floods the dry dock on which the container ship is built. As water levels increase, the ship floats slowly. Once released, Tugboats open the dry dock gate and pull the ship out. The container ship is then moved to the last stage, the outfitting. At this stage, small components, piping systems, wiring, engine parts and other accommodation equipment are installed. It is a demanding job that requires high technicality and meticulous attention from everyone in the shipyard. Quality control is ensured throughout the entire process. Every piece of the ship is tested using tailored solutions to ensure its quality. The general performance of these giant vessels is tested during the so-called sea trial, which is conducted by the shipbuilder in the presence of the shipowner representatives and members from these certification bodies. Sea trial aims at evaluating, among others, speed, maneuverability, endurance, and safety equipment. Container ships are enormous, which is why the loading and unloading process involves special materials and skillful terminal operators to handle them safely. Container ships stored in the yards are first moved by rubber-tired gantry cranes and placed on a container port truck. Then. Gigantic cranes lift the container up to 131.23 feet. Before arriving at the port, ship representatives receive a detailed list of the cargo to be loaded. According to the nature of goods and container type, cargo planners draw the loading plan and decide where to place each container. Some terminals are semi-automated. All the equipment from the RTGs to the cranes is operated remotely. Such terminals are likely to have less dwell time, less energy consumption, and increased operational efficiency.
as ship owners continue investing in ultra-large container carriers. Consequently, port authorities and terminal operators must also invest in a new generation of equipment and expansion projects to serve these mega vessels. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.